Hi, I'm Ms. Cornwell. I teach third grade at Arbor Heights Elementary, and I'm so glad you're joining me for another reading comprehension lesson today. For today's lesson, you will need a few materials. The first thing you'll need is this week's learning packet. You might have gotten this sent to you by your teacher. You could also access it on the Seattle Public Schools website. If you don't have this week's learning packet, that's just fine. You can use your student response book if you happen to have that at home. You can use just a notebook. I'm, I'm going to be writing in a composition book or a piece of scratch paper, something that already has something else printed on the other side. You'll also need a pen or pencil to write and a turn and talk partner. Remember, this can be anyone who's watching this video at home with you. And if you speak to that person in a language other than English, that's okay. If you don't have a turn and talk partner, don't worry, you can just think about the answers in your head. Take a few moments to gather these materials, and then we'll go ahead and get started. All right. In our last lesson, we read a couple of passages from this book, Lifetimes. It's written by David L. Rice and illustrated by Michael S. Madak. The publisher is Dawn Publishing. Dawn Publications. In the last lesson, we talked about what we were learning and also what important ideas we could find in the passages we read about army ants and elephants. So today, we're going to read another passage from this text. The passage we'll read today is about a specific kind of cactus called a saguaro cactus. But before we start reading, I wanna teach you a new strategy that we'll use to think about and to share our thinking. This is called think, pair, write. It's similar to what we've already been doing and what you were doing in your classrooms before with turning and talking to share your ideas. But we're just going to add another step. For think, pair, write, I'll ask a question. And first, I'll ask you to think to yourself about the answer to that question. Then, I'll invite you to turn and talk if you have a turn and talk partner to discuss with at home. After that, I'll ask you to write about your ideas in your learning packet or a piece of scratch paper. The reason we use this strategy is to give you some time to practice explaining your ideas in, by talking before you write them down. We'll try it out today and we'll reflect a little bit at the end of the lesson to see how it goes. All right, saguaro cactuses. Remember, this is a non-fiction book. It gives us true information about plants and animals and other organisms. Let's get ourselves ready to read by thinking. What do you already think you know about cactuses? When I have asked my students this question, I've heard, well, I know that cactuses usually grow in the desert. I know that they don't need very much water, and I know that they have um, spikes on them that can hurt if you touch them. We're going to read this page uh, together twice. The first time, I'd like you to think about what are you learning about saguaro cactuses? The second time, we'll think about what does the author most want us to understand and remember about saguaro cactuses or what are the important ideas in this passage? A lifetime for a saguaro cactus is about 100 years. If water were money, the saguaro, and here I see a text feature, which is a pronunciation guide. So this shows me that I should pronounce it saguaro. If water were money, the saguaro would be rich. The saguaro grows in the desert where it doesn't rain for eight or nine months at a time. The temperature can get as hot as 120 degrees Fahrenheit. Most plants can't live in such a hot, dry place. But when it does rain, the saguaro saves as much as it can. It stores up to 250 gallons of water. 250 gallons is about four bathtubs full. 
It stores up to 250 gallons of water in its thick stem to keep it alive until the next rain. Where most plants can't grow at all, the saguaro thrives. Thrives means it grows easily, it does really well. Where most plants can't grow at all, the saguaro thrives and grows up to 60 feet tall. The saguaro shares its wealth. Many desert animals depend on the saguaro for food and moisture. Native Americans who live in the desert use its juicy red fruit to make jam or syrup. Now that we've read this passage one time, what have you learned about saguaro cactuses? Turn and talk. There was a lot of interesting information in here. One interesting thing that I learned is that a saguaro cactus can store up to 250 gallons of water in its stem, which is pretty amazing. Now, we're going to read this passage a second time. If you'd like, you can open up your learning packet to find this passage written. You can also find it on page 65 of your student response book. If you don't have those things, don't worry. You can just follow along with me on the screen here. As we read the second time, please pay attention to what do you think is most important to understand and remember. A lifetime for a saguaro cactus is about 100 years. If water were money, the saguaro would be rich. The saguaro grows in the desert where it doesn't rain for eight or nine months at a time. The temperature can get as hot as 120 degrees Fahrenheit. Most plants can't live in such a hot, dry place. But when it does rain, the saguaro saves as much as it can. It stores up to 250 gallons of water in its thick stem to keep it alive until the next rain. Where most plants can't grow at all, the saguaro thrives and grows up to 60 feet tall. The saguaro shares its wealth. Many desert animals depend on the saguaro for food and moisture. Native Americans who live in the desert use its juicy red fruit to make jam or syrup. What do you think is most important to understand and remember from this passage? Or another way to think about it is, what is this passage mainly about? Don't forget our very important sentence here. Make sure you explain your reasoning using the reason I think this is. Think. Turn and talk. Now, before I share what I've heard from students before, I would like you to please write. As a quick reminder, here's what I wrote about elephants during the last lesson. I wanted to make sure, I wanted to make sure to use complete sentences, capitalize them at the beginning, and also to explain my reasoning. So I wrote, I think the most important idea is that elephants have feelings, just like we do. The reason I think this is that elephants cry when an elephant they love dies. You can use this to help you think about how to organize your thoughts about saguaro cactuses. So I'll put the passage back up. Please take out your learning packet or scratch paper and go ahead and write a journal entry. I'm going to write mine too, so I'm going to be quiet for a couple minutes to give you time and me time to write.
All right, I've finished my writing. If you haven't finished your writing yet, you could pause the video if you can and finish writing. If you can't pause the video, just wait until the end and then you can finish your writing then. Here's what I was thinking. I wrote, I think an important thing to remember is that saguaro cactuses conserve or save their resources. The reason I think this is they are able to survive in the dry desert by storing lots of water whenever it rains. What did you think? Remember, if you had a different idea than me, that is just fine. In fact, it makes our conversations more interesting. Just make sure that you're explaining through your reasoning. In today's lesson, we practiced determining important ideas in a, in a nonfiction passage about cactuses. We did this by using the think, pair, write strategy. How did this go for you today? Take a second to reflect. What did you and your partner, if you had a turn and talk partner, do to explain your thinking clearly when you were talking? Now, I know that this is a different situation than it would be if you were turning and talking in a classroom, but here are some things that I've heard from my students when I've asked this question. They've said, I made sure to explain my thinking clearly by using the reason I think this is. They've also said, when I didn't understand something my partner was saying, I made sure to ask them to clarify so that, I, so that then they understood. Explaining your reasoning clearly and having partner discussions is a great way to talk about texts that you're reading. In our next lesson, we'll read one more passage from the book Lifetimes and we'll continue to talk about important ideas. And that's what I'd like you to practice for IDR today. At the end of this video, please first take some time to finish your writing if you haven't finished that yet. Then make sure that you read a just write book for 20 to 30 minutes today. It can be any genre, but you might want to try nonfiction because that's what we've been practicing today, determining important ideas. After you read, please think about what, are you, what you are learning and what some important things are to understand and remember. I've already shared with you that I'm reading this book, The Gauntlet, which is a fiction book, but I'm also reading this nonfiction book, which is called Reptiles. The page that I'm on is chapter five, Misunderstood Monsters. It says, snakes and lizards have long been feared and in some cases worshipped by people. Their otherworldly appearance and bizarre, bizarre means strange, bizarre physical abilities have awed and terrified humans throughout history. But snakes and lizards, like most animals, pose very little threat to humans. After you've done your IDR time, after you've tried your reading comprehension strategies and thought about important ideas, I encourage you to find someone at home and to share your thinking about your IDR book with them. Start by telling them the title and the author of the book and one or two sentences about what the book is about so they have kind of an idea. Then share with them one or two important ideas from the part that you read today. For example, here's how I would do that for this book. I am reading the book Reptiles. It was written by Tom Grieve and published by Rourke Publishing. This book is about different types of reptiles. It gives some information about their habitat, what they eat, and other facts, and it also talks about how they're, some of them are in danger and how humans can help to save them. An important idea in the part that I read today is that reptiles, even though people have been scared of them, they don't actually cause much danger to humans. The reason I think this is an important idea is that the title of this chapter is Misunderstood Monsters, and all of the details in this paragraph talk about how people have been scared of snakes and lizards for many, many years, but that they don't actually cause that much damage to humans. 
And then there's more information about that in the text features as well. That's your IDR task for today. Thank you so much for joining me for today's lesson. I'm proud of the hard work that you're doing at home, and I know that your teachers are too. Please join me for our next lesson, where we'll continue working on determining important ideas. Thanks again, take care, and I'll see you next time.